Good days. This is David Wu. Today's talk is on my 50 years of research on Chinese cuisine overseas, entitled Colonialism, Warfare, Migration, and Ethnicity in the Diaspora Pan-Chinese Cuisine. I'm a lucky gourmet and an anthropologist called Fu Tang Tang Zhu, Wu Yan He, or David Wu. Greetings from Honolulu. Today's talk is special prepared in memory of the late Professor K.C. Zhang, Zhang Wang Zhi Jiao Shou. It has uh, four parts. I shall very quickly start with the introduction, my relationship with Zhang Guangzhi, and then a history of Chinese cuisine, and then how the global Cold War War helped to invent the United States Mandarin restaurant and later becoming the Pan China cuisine. And the final part is um, the Japanese promotion and invention of Chinese food, which have becoming global non comfort foods from Japan. Not many people know that uh, KC and I, we share the lifetime friendship. We share sim similar identity, ethnic and cultural identity. We have similar family and uh, ancestral background traced back to China uh, and uh, Taiwan for the past uh, many generations. And uh, we had the similar education and uh, career in Taiwan and United States in archaeology and anthropology. This photo is taken in 1996. My previous uh, late First wife, Waylon and I had uh, a celebration dinner with KC when in 1996, he received the most important contribution to Asian studies at the annual meeting happened to be uh, held in Honolulu. And uh, second part, we shall consider China as the food center of Chinese cuisine. However, when it spread outside of China, it went through colonial war or civil war, large scale migration of Chinese from China to come to North and South America. And in the ethnic communities in the past 200 years, the Chinese immigrants invented a cuisine until the 1950s known as the chop suey or chop suey cuisine, also chip eat. And I shall later discuss the Mandarin restaurants in the late 20th and the early 21st century. Here, I'm going to show a few slides. I'm sure you'll find that uh, in the Chinese restaurants, there are decorations to symbolize the collective memory of Chinese food history and the Chinese cultural identity. It's funny, on the overseas, you will find those symbols like red lanterns, Ch Chinese mountain paintings, and Chinese god, Fudu Shou or Guan Gong. And uh, definitely you will find horse, panda, Chinatown, and uh, Kung Fu, Gong Fu. Here in the uh, typical Yan Cha or Hong Kong style Yin Cha restaurant, you find red, red lantern and paintings. You find in the front of the, uh, the Chinese restaurant, uh, a more traditional Cantonese style, you'll find all the symbols, Guan Gong, Buddha, and uh, 
many other stops in red. And then a huge horse outside of a new Han China cuisine restaurant in Honolulu. And uh, Panda, Panda is everywhere in every city, every place in the United States where it, there is a food court in the Chinatown food, the old chop suey and mix of all kinds of food served in the food court under the store name of Panda. And here in Las Vegas, you'll find a Kung Fu restaurant, which served Thai in Chinese. Here's a couple of menus to present a listed the so-called dishes North and South China, old chop suey and the new Mandarin. Well, interesting enough, there are standardized, professionalized, so-called high-class Mandarin restaurants invented and honored by uh, white uh, Americans, by Americans who are not Chinese, and this is one good example, P.F. Chan's China Bistro all over the United States. The following four slides showing one open and closed in nine, uh, early 2000. I overheard they spent two million U.S. dollars to create that restaurant and gave up. Here, outside of the restaurant, you will find a huge horse. Inside, you find Qingming Shanghe to decorate the entire restaurant hall. And uh, Qin Shi Huang's tomb in Xi'an, you know, the archaeological site discovered hundreds, thousands of uh, burial terracotta. Qin Yong is found in this restaurant. To me, there is authentic Chinese. Foods. And uh, the kitchen staff, cooks, waiter, waitresses, most are well, what we Chinese call foreigners. They are either Mexicans or white people. I shall now continue to discuss some interesting aspects of how the Mandarin cuisine was invented in the United States. And here, is something I've never seen any research paper discuss the point. That is, in the American mass media, there is a circulation of a myth of who brought in the authentic Mandarin cuisine, the high-class cuisine uh, from China into the United States in the after Second World War in the 1950s, or even later 70s. Here, I list a few celebrity chefs who appear on television teaching Americans how to cook, how to cook, how, how to cook ch Chinese meal. Uh, so what I say here, as some of you may know, if you are old enough, uh, from Julia Chow teaching French cooking on television to the later celebrity Chinese chefs. You know, because of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, now if you go turn on your television, there is one channel which in the evening have Julia Chow's French cooking repeated every night. It was credited the, the authentic Mandarin cuisine to Joyce Chen restaurants in Massachusetts, Boston, right outside of the MIT campus. Uh, she came from Shanghai. She left Shanghai in the 50s, 60s, op opened the restaurant 60s. I had pleasure to eat there twice in the 60s and in the 70s. And I interviewed uh, uh, two workers from Taiwan, two helpers in that restaurant. And uh, you people from Taiwan, if you're old enough, you might have heard of Fu Pei Mei. She wrote uh, Pei Mei Shi Pu Jia Chang Cai, 
and she is a Taiwan celebrity. Also, she taught Mandarin uh, cuisine in Japan. Then one of the long-term most well-known TV character is under Yang Ken Ku, that's Martin Yan. Uh, he still appears on television, but he is Cantonese. What he teaches is kind of a traditional Cantonese dishes. And then there's Ning Tsai. You will see their, their picture, their photos later, who claim to teach non-Chinese food but uh, his parents from Hunan, and uh, he graduated from either Yale University or MIT. Very unusual for Chinese chef. And the final one, globally famous, is Japanese Iron Man, Iron Chef, Chen Ken Yuji. His father came to Japan to start a Chinese restaurant. This is Yan Ken Ku on a shopping center billboard in Honolulu. Ming Tsai, you can find out more about him online. Then, interesting enough, uh, my few work took me to the real, authentic, very traditional pre-communist revolution, North Chinese uh, food and restaurants, but few Chinese know about it. For example, in Santa Monica, California, there's a Wolfgang Park's Xinhua, where I often had dinner because I visited uh, uh, LA almost every year from 70s to uh, the early 21st century. Wolfgang Park is most famous celebrity he chef from Austria. He has uh, his restaurant all over the United States and in some airport around the world. The second one, interesting one, very few people know. At Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, the most uh, upscale, expensive Mandarin restaurant is called Mr. Chow. And before that, near UCLA in in uh, LA is the Euro child. And uh, since my childhood, I had the most authentic, best uh, Beijing and North China food. So I could tell the taste. Mr. Charles is still open. So is Xinhua. But Mr. Charles place most expensive. If you get there, you don't see any Chinese. Old waiters, Waiters were in tuxedos and guests, most like movie stars and uh, some black basketball players. By the way, Mr. Chow came to, uh, was sent to England and came to United States by his father, the famous opera singer, Qi Lin Tong. He was famous before uh, People's Republic of China in Shanghai. This is a photo, upper part outside and, and lower part inside the Euro Child restaurant. It doesn't look like Chinese at all. Very fancy French restaurant maybe. I have a few slides here to show around the world. Some of the high class, most expensive, authentic pan Chinese cuisine. Restaurant doesn't look like Chinese because they are not cheap eat, not cheap eat restaurant like in the United States. Look at the fancy uh, uh, wine cellar. It is located in Osaka, Daban, China. Heijin Lo actually is in Cantonese. And where I had to spend my own pocket money to do field work, had had the one of my best uh, uh, satisfied uh, uh, combination, best Cantonese and uh, uh, yam cha, drinking tea, right? uh, and uh, a live fish taken out from their, their uh, aquarium. 
and cook. By the way, Haitian law had started in Hong Kong. It's still in, in, in starting in Yokohama and then went to Hong Kong and back in Osaka. Okay, here some of you, especially my old friends may know, is uh, Yang Cha, a Dianxin Dim Sum restaurant in Hong Kong at the Regin Hotel, a fancy one where the waiter standing between me and uh, Dr. Dan, Dan Jinping and the guest from China. By the way, we, uh, Dan was still teaching at the Chinese University of Ireland. But waiter must be in, in full formal, uh, <coughs> in formal suit and, and uh, tie. And in contrast, you, you'll find some other restaurants which, uh, oh, which are in the United States, people wear slippers and t-shirts. So the next part, part three of my talk, I would like to speak some more on the uh, invention of Mandarin restaurants and so-called Northern Chinese cuisine. And from the 1950s to the 70s, how it developed into many, uh, actually dishes came from many parts of China, uh, whether it's uh, Yun, Yunnan, Shanghai, Hunan, Sichuan, or even Guangdong, they still call it Mandarin, uh, Northern Chinese authentic uh, uh, food. So I wrote a paper at the bottom of this slide, you, you, you can uh, consult and learn more about my field work and uh, writings. And at, uh, concerning two Mandarin restaurants, one is in Honolulu, pseudonym Autumn Leaves or Yan Jing is the longest uh, uh, serving and open the Mandarin restaurant in Honolulu. The other one is in Louis Anna in, in New Orleans. The Lucky Garden, I interviewed owners since uh, 50 years ago, and uh, they closed the shop, closed the restaurant about 10 years ago. The owner happened to be my husband uh, my high school classmates. You can check my paper underneath. Okay, this uh, external photo of the Honolulu Mandarin cuisine, and uh, they claim to serve uh, the authentic Mandarin uh, food, such as this is the standardized the pan Chinese cuisine in the United States. Uh, there's gam Gambian Siji Do, there's Zhang Cha Ya, there's seafood in the basket, and so on and so forth, coming from many parts of China, but they still consider it Bei Fang Cai Mandarin. Okay, now the final part of my uh, discussion is something new. I have never published uh, uh, this uh, research. That's Chinese restaurant in Japan and the standardized dishes for 200 years. So there should be two parts. One is after World War, after Sino-Japanese War finished, when Japanese soldiers returned to Japan, they brought with them special from Shandong Jiaozi. In Shandong pronunciation is Jiaozi and becoming Ryoza. And then ramen, that's ramen and the other stuff. And then uh, a few slides down here, I talk about 21st century globalization of Japanese comfort foods, which have been followed with people attributed to Japanese as manga, anime, 
And the Japanese comfort food actually all borrows from China, uh, Chinese, it's girls are jiaozi, ramen, ramen, yakisoba, or chao chao mai mian. Okay, about Japan's uh, Chinese restaurant, there are a lot of the uh, chain restaurants uh, around Japan has been there, you know, uh, since after the war. One of the famous one is o, Osaka Oshu. The star by Wang Jiang. Look at the poster or the, the considered famous chef, Chinese chef. Look like uh, Guan Gong. And here again, I go there to eat every year in the spring and autumn when I went to uh, do field work or join the conferences or on my way to my old hometown, Taiwan. When you go in, very popular gyoza restaurant, but they serve a set lunch, teishoku, which when you say teishoku ding shi, then you must have it Western way that you must have rice, uh, consider Chinese soup, and a uh, little salad, and uh, well, the, uh, some other kind of a Chinese stuff uh, served as app appetizer. And then this dish happened to be what I ordered, Wei Guo Rou, uh, pork twice cooked, uh, uh, fried with vegetables. Then I'm going to talk about the Japanese noodles, ramen. Well, ac actually, this should be uh, the invented uh, ramen. Here, they're all over the world. I happen to did few work, have a few slides. This one is in the largest shopping center, Alamoana. A shopping center uh, in the food court. Japanese noodle run by uh, uh, a group of uh, Chinese helpers from Guangdong and Taiwan. Owner is actually ethnic Korean. Here, uh, interesting uh, small eating place. Uh, every night crowded with uh, uh, customers. Jindu ramen. Kyoto ramen, or in uh, Chinese, actually, on the left side says, eh, pure Japanese style, ramen dao, that's the ramen street, and it's jugu ramen or pork bone ramen. You know where it is located here? is in Qinzhou, Taiwan, right outside of the Tsinghua Da uh, There is uh, one street of uh, you know, gourmet cheap ease frequented by the Tsinghua Da uh, students. Here, the following part, I'm going to tell the story of how instant ramen was invented by a Taiwanese, Anto Momofuku, Anton Bai Fu, and uh, he never publicized his ethnic background as Taiwanese. He's just saying this is famous uh, uh, inventor of uh, Japanese ramen. And this is in the front of a ramen uh, museum. Uh, in the city, a uh, small city called Ikeda, near Osaka city. I did field work there several times uh, in several different years already. In the museum, you can learn how to cook the instant uh, ramen. And here is a photo of some uh, instant ramen or 泡面, 
that I pick up in the supermarket uh, in Honolulu. Uh, on, the, on the top two packages and left the package, they all belong to one famous branch from uh, Japan. Looks like a Zhonghua Sanwei, the three flavors of uh, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese cuisine. No, it's Zhonghua Sanmei. Funny, you have to read my paper to get the uh, later for published paper to get the meaning. And there's Cantonese style in the bottom on the left up corner is the liang, liang mian, cold noodle uh, for the summer. And on the right top is Beijing style ramen. Down the right side corner is the one of the most popular uh, ramen instant noodles that you can purchase around the world. But this one happened to be, we got from the Honolulu supermarket, uh, Sapporo Ichiban, shio, shio ramen means salt, salty ramen is uh, of the Hokkaido Sapporo ramen. Ichiban is number one. Okay, the next, next part of my final part about, about the Japanese invention and uh, where you can en enjoy the best the comfort food uh, in Japan. Uh, here, I gave you three slides that uh, uh, <coughs> display the festivals, local festivals in Japan is for promoting the tourism of local identity. So happened, the first slice is uh, my good fortune with my wife, Dr. Hino, to visit perhaps one of the best uh, uh, Taiwanese cuisine restaurant called Little Taipei in the opera and the Broadway show region. About other Taiwanese cuisine, Taiwanese restaurant, of course, in our same panel, you learn from Dr. Chen from Taiwan. She wrote many good papers about Taiwanese restaurant, Taiwanese food. The second slide, I show you the, uh, the, the festival in Osaka, which is for the uh, celebration of the Japanese god of wealth and business, Ebisu, Ebisu uh, Matsuri, Ebisu Festival, where I found an interesting new food stand, uh, uh, the food stand hawkers sell interesting ethnic food from all, all over the world, outside of the Ebisu Temple. And uh, the, the final last one is the essential gyoza food stand in one of the local matsuris. Here, the Xin, tai, Xin Taipei, uh, little Taipei restaurants, where you know what they serve, authentic new Taiwanese cuisine, such as Gua Bao in Taiwanese. If we say it in Mandarin, it's Ge Bao, it doesn't make any sense. It means freeze the pork, fatty pork, wrapped with open steamed bun. And also you can have Dan Zi Mian and the Dan Dan Mian. Well, that's a Taiwanese style hot uh, uh, soup, soup noodles and actually the beginning of uh, small ramen, I believe. Then this is photo of the uh, <coughs> festivity and the street march of the pretty Japanese lady dressed up with ancient, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, priest uh, costumes, right parade right outside of the Ebisu 
uh, temple, the god of uh, wells. And then outside of temple, there were dozens of uh, hawkers uh, sell the comfort food, uh, fried noodles, uh, ramen, soup noodles. But I found that this uh, picture was taken almost 10 years ago. Interesting. You can, if you can read Chinese, it's Shengjian uh, Mantou. Sejin Manju, and uh, on the right, right up corner, some famous uh, stuff from Shang, Shanghai. If there's uh, any participant from Shanghai, you would know. In Shanghai, you have Shengjian Baozi, the pork dumpling uh, uh, fried. I visited Shanghai so many times. And one pleasure was in the morning, go outside of my fancy, expensive five-star hotel to go to the local market and get a couple of genuine Shengjian Baozi in, in the food and vegetable market. So now I'll stop here.